All right, so in this video, I'll be showing you how to make this rainbow texture. So we'll be using a few different nodes, such as the separate XYZ node, along with the color ramp and the mix RGB node. So we can get started by going into solid mode and then moving over the original sphere. I'll press Shift C to center my cursor and then press Shift A, add in a mesh and add in a UV sphere. Then to add a bit of higher detail, I'll change the segments from 32 to 64 and the rings from 16 to 32. Then to shade smooth, all I need to do is press the W key and then click shade smooth. So once we've done that, we can go up to our shading tab and then we can select our object here, go to this panel and just click on material, which loads in our blank material. So the first node that we're going to add in, which will be the basis of the, um, the material is going to be our separate XYZ node. So as you can see, I've got it added in like so. We could have used the gradient texture node. However, for the purposes of this video, I prefer using the separate XYZ. And then if we have node Wrangler enabled, we can press control T and that will add in the texture coordinates and mapping node. I'm not sure why I added in the image texture, so I'll just press X to delete and then fill these in like so. If uh, you don't have Node Wrangler enabled, make sure to go up to Edit, Preferences, and then search for Node Wrangler here and make sure to enable it. Anyway, and then the next thing you'll need to do is just change the texture coordinates from UV to generated and plug it into the vector like so. So with um, Node Wrangler enabled, we can press Control Shift and left click on our object. Let me just hide this UV sphere so that we don't need to see it. And then I can press control shift. And as you can see, we have a gradient going from black to white on the X axis, which is going from left to right. I'll press control shift and left click on my uh, node here twice so that I can get the Z axis. So it goes from bottom to top. And then the node that we're going to use to add in some color will be the color ramp node. So this is used for a range of things but for, uh, for the material that we're making, it's going to dictate where the colors are positioned on our, on our mesh. So um, what I can do is pull up the slider, and as you can see, the black region is moved up in correspondence to it. So to make the colors of the rainbow, all we need to do is add in more positions and change the colors. So we have a black and white and the other colors that we're going to add. So the first one's gonna be red, second one's gonna be orange, yellow, green, blue, and then this final one will be purple. However, we want our positions to be distributed evenly so that we have an even gradient throughout the uh, throughout our object. So we can do that by clicking this down arrow here and pressing distribute stops evenly. And as you can see, they are all distributed equidistant from each other. So I can start coloring in our UV sphere by selecting this, uh, this black region which is for our color selector and changing it to red by using my RGB numbers here. The next color I'll do is orange. So orange is a mix of, I think, red and green. So I'll turn the blue to zero, red to one, and then orange to a 0.333 so that we have that mix of uh, red and green. And then for yellow, what I can do is turn down the blue once again, turn up the red all the way to one, and also turn up the green all the way to one. So that's how we get to yellow. Then green, very simple, turn down red and turn down blue, and then turn green all the way up. And then blue will be just blue. So turn down red, turn down green, and turn up blue. And then for purple, purple is just a mix between red and blue. So we turn down the green all the way to zero. Okay, so we've got our um, colors. And what we can do is just change the blending mode. So we have a few uh, different modes here. Uh, e I usually use either B spline, as you can see, it's quite blended, but the colors are a bit washed out. But uh, I also like using ease, and I think that's probably the best option for uh, this material. And then what we can do is just plug it into the base color of our principal BSDF node, press Control Shift and left click on our principal BSDF. And as you can see, we have our rainbow texture always find that uh, this material works best when we have a bit more reflections. So I'll turn down the roughness to a 0.2 maybe, and then metallics to a 0.6. And as you can see, that looks 
a lot more interesting. So one thing I can do to add a bit more visual flair to the uh, to our material is add in a mix RGB node. A mix RGB node can blend the properties of many different nodes. Um, it's used for a range of different things. But as you can see, since we're using the mix factor or the mix uh, style of the mix RGB node, um, our color ramp is being washed out as it's not as uh, as it's supposed to be mixed with something else and that's something else being just this color gray. However, if we change the uh, blend mode from mix to multiply, which is here, you can see that all of our colors have been retained and um, there's no like washing out of our colors. So uh, what we can do to blend the, uh, the colors in a more interesting way is to add in a noise texture. So press Shift A, go to texture and find the noise texture here, or you could search up the noise section in the search menu, either way. And then what I like to do is plug the factor into the color of our mix, uh, of our mix um, shader or our mix RGB, apologies. And then what I can do is turn up the scale and apologies, I made the mistake. Actually, we don't need to mu multiply, we actually need overlay. So we overlay our uh, mix RGB onto the, um, onto our color ramp and then we can turn up the factor just so that we can see our mixing a bit more. And look at that, you can see that we have a bit more noisy, there's a bit more mixing between layers and that is due to our noise texture. So if I press control shift and left click on the noise texture, you can see how it looks. And then what, what I like to do for noise texture is bring up the distortion for that really like trippy wavy effect and maybe turn up the detail as well, but that doesn't make too much of a difference. So I'll press control shift and left click on my principal BSDF and there you go. Uh, we have this uh, very interesting uh, rainbow noise texture uh, thing going on. And if we've changed the scale to something lower, you can see that we have these larger strokes. So this, uh, so the noise texture and the mix RGB nodes are a very powerful combination where we can affect the way that uh, different properties interact. So we affected the way the separate XYZ node um, interacts with the color ramp and um, to get this wavy effect. So uh, that's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one.